why the Prime Minister refuses to fire his incompetent and misleading public safety minister. And it is that the Prime Minister himself was the one who accepted the transfer of Paul Bernardo from a maximum security prison to a medium security prison where he would have access to human interaction, more freedom and more comfort. His office knew three months beforehand and his cabinet has the power to direct the uh, correctional authorities to keep mass murderers in maximum security prisons. Will the Prime Minister show the courage to stand on his feet and explain to victims of Paul Bernardo why he wanted to give this monster more freedom and comfort? Yes. Yeah. The Honourable Government House Leader. Well, first of all, Mr. Speaker, the idea that anybody in this House um, would have any sympathy uh, for the monstrous acts that were committed is absolutely repugnant. Uh, the second thing that I will say, Mr. Speaker, is that it's unfortunate that the Leader of the Opposition mischaracterized uh, what happened. He knows very well that Correctional Services Canada makes those decisions independently. He knows very well as well, Mr. Speaker, that we have a system we're not supposed to interfere politically with that. Uh, Mr. Speaker, it is true in March that, that staff were informed of the possibility. It wasn't until that possibility was confirmed that they informed the Prime Minister at the end of May. The Leader of the Opposition. Based on that account, the Prime Minister knew the day of the transfer, and his off office knew three months earlier. The government has in the past issued directives to correction services on what should be done with various classes of prisoners, like by forcing those with contraband into dry prison cells, for example. In other words, they do have the power to direct corrections on these issues. The Prime Minister and his office knew for three months. Given that he's here in Ottawa today, does he have the courage to explain his decision to let this monster go out of a maximum security penitentiary, yes or no? Opposition officer. Uh, who I know cares as deeply about the gravity of those crimes and the impact on the families as I do. I know he cares as deeply about what we're going to do for Canadians on that. I also know that he knows the independent, uh, independence of our correctional services system. I know that he also knows that we're not supposed to interfere politically. And so I would ask him to work collaboratively with us to find a way where we don't politicize Correctional Services Canada and we work together to make sure that the families who are impacted in crimes of these nature are, are taken care of, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. I look across at the Prime Minister's seat. I know that he is in Ottawa today, and if he had the courage, he would be standing to answer these questions directly. No, that's, that, I just want to remind the Honourable Members that we can't do indirectly what we do directly. So I'll let him continue. And I take the House Leader up on his challenge to work with us. We have a bill that would make sure every mass murderer stays in a maximum exactly. security right. penitentiary. It's before the House. Will the government pass it with unanimous consent today? The Honourable Government House Leader. So, first of all, Mr. Speaker, uh, I would say that I look directly at the leader of the official opposition for a reason. I look at him for a reason because when we're dealing with when we're dealing with something as serious and as, as, as brutal as the crimes that occurred in, an, in a community that was right next to mine, that I felt viscerally, uh, that the conversation that we have has to be measured, it has to be based on cooperation, and frankly, Mr. Speaker, based on the underlying premise that every member cares equally and deeply about this, about two things, about the victims, absolutely, but also about not politicizing our correctional services system. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. I take the, I take the House Leader at his word that he is equally horrified with this monster and that he wants to do something. But I take him at his word when he says he wants to work with us to reverse this transfer and put this monster back in a maximum security penitentiary. The good news is that he can do that today. The member, the Conservative member for Niagara Falls, who represents many of the family and friends of the victims, has a bill that would ensure that every single mass murderer stays in a maximum security penitentiary mm -hmm. forever. Will the government commit to passing it with unanimous consent and send Paul Bernardo back to maximum security penitentiary? The 
Honorable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, we are, in all instances, ready to have a conversation about how we don't politicize our correctional services, about how we ensure that we take care of victims and their families. And, Mr. Speaker, there is a review of the decision that was made by Correctional Services. It's going to be completed in two weeks. I would suggest that we take a look at that. And I would also suggest that when we're dealing with something as major as changing our correctional services system, that it deserves discussion, it deserves the ability for it to be examined by all parliamentarians and to make sure that we don't create unintended consequences, Mr. Speaker.